All right, you parents who have been following this course, it's time to sum up and summarize what we've learned. We've for brain structures, and we've noticed how every one of us and our children has a unique brain structure. These anatomical features of the brain provide us with crucial information about the kind of care we must give ourselves to flourish as a whole, happy people. It was once this reptilian-like, primitive brain's job to ensure that our basic physiological demands were met. At this point in the game, there are three aspects of sleep that we have emphasized. And I'm sick of restating the same points over and over. But this is so important that it can't be stressed enough. Second, the value of perpetual movement. Sports are a great way to get kids moving and using their bodies. Three, diet. In addition to providing energy, the nutrients in food are essential for developing brains. To that end, it would be helpful if you could advise them on improving their nutrition. And the key is to follow the Mediterranean diet right. Whole grains, lean meats, nuts, seeds, olive oil, fish, etc. We discussed the limbic system's role in social interaction and how we as individuals construct our sense of self in light of our connections with other people. It influences our sense of self-worth, our trust in other people, and our sensitivity to the pain of social exclusion, all of which contribute to the persuasive power of the influence of our companions. For our young people especially, this is a harsh reality. As a result of this shift in cognitive processing, we now have to consider not just the effects of screen time and the prefrontal cortex, but also the value of perseverance and the ability to defer pleasure. We examined not just the brain's ability to adapt to new information and learn, but also the fact that adolescent brain structure is the last to develop and its far-reaching effects on our young adults, particularly in their relationships with others and their willingness to take risks. And two, the unbiased observer will have seen that adolescence is a time of unification for Indians. Your kid will be accustomed to following the rules on the one hand and have the confidence to stand up for themselves against peer pressure if you strike the right paleolimbic balance toward assertiveness in the years leading up to adolescence. On the other hand, you may unlock its full potential in the limbic system by allowing it the freedom it needs to operate within the confines of the paleolimbic model. Your adolescent will have less incentive to explore now that they know its benefits and advantages. If you were able to restrain yourself from excessively applauding and promoting the attributes you desire to see your kids develop, his motivation would be far more rooted in his own core personality and much less about what others think or expect of him making them less of a crowd pleaser. Of course, some minor social traumas will have occurred at school or elsewhere, but if you could prevent them, your adolescent will be less likely to resort to the extremes brought on by compensating mechanisms. Sleep, physical activity, and a nutritious diet are, in my opinion, the two most important foundations for a healthy brain. Then there's grit, which is tied to things like being able to defer gratification, and having a development mentality and is, in fact, the bedrock of success in the long run. What about the three guiding principles? First, establish a routine and guidelines for your child to follow, and then encourage him to play and explore his world within those parameters with as little adult interference as possible. Let kids explore and see what works and what doesn't for them. Third, Try to stay away from minor public humiliations, social traumas. Follow these three guidelines and your relationship with your children will improve dramatically. There will be good times and bad, just as in any pair of people's lives. And if things are becoming heated between you and your kid, keep in mind that the easiest approach to cope with the primitive brain is to remove the imagined risk. You're not the bad guy here you are on their side. When they need assistance, I know you are there to help. Now that your primitive brain has been turned off, you can have a rational discussion. A uh, fair enough. Keep in mind that our children act mostly on an emotional rather than a logical level. And if we want to communicate with them as effectively as possible, 
we need to put ourselves in their shoes, talk to them about emotions, acknowledge them, express our own feelings, and provide direction. And there is one thing I can guarantee you. It's going to become troublesome because things won't go the way you plan. You're about to have a nervous breakdown. Both you and they will shout at each other. Sometimes you just need to stop and breathe. You'll need to instill some kind of logic in them. Those times will come. They'll need you to provide them justification. The challenges and rewards of becoming a parent. And if you ever return home to a playroom covered in your daughter's hair, as I once did, simply relax, take a big breath, and imagine yourself ten years after. Recalling the events of that day. To put things in perspective, consider how much worse things could be if you and your loved one were separated. Yes, that's fantastic. First, there's a tremor. Launching into the initial scenario. Fear does not affect Lenny Bruce. In this context, you are invisible to me. He's pleasant company. The inability to communicate in front street language. What's on the platter with? Get here fast and bring your largest bruise. Multiply the calamity by a factor of five. Time's about to change. That's what I thought. The location is an open-air setting. This world as we know it does. It was all about parenting. Stay blessed. Give suggestions and comments if you enjoyed this course with myriad knowledge.